Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at arithmetic series and what we're going to do now is add together all the terms in those arithmetic sequences that we've been working in in part A. Uh, here we're going to be answering questions from exercise 3D. So uh, we have an arithmetic sequence that starts at a certain value and goes up by a common difference each time. An arithmetic series will just add together all of the numbers in those sequences. So uh, let's just see how we might do this for adding up the numbers from 1 to 100. Now that's a starting value of 1 and a common difference of 1 because you go up 1 each time. So s here is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 all the way up to plus 99 plus 100. OK, now what we're going to think about doing here is reversing the order of that addition. Why are we going to do that? Because what we're going to do now is we're going to add up in the columns. So 1 add 100 is 101, 2 add 99 is 101, 3 add 98 is 101. And you can see here that for all the terms that we um, are adding together here, we're always going to get a sum of 101. It's quite interesting. Um, so effectively here, what we have is 100 101s. So we can simplify that to 2s is equal to 100 lots of 101s. And now if we divide by 2, this actually gives us a formula to help us work out what 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 100 is. It's 100 times 101 divided by 2, which is quite interesting. So 5,000... And 50. So this was discovered by uh, Carl Frederick Grouse while he was still in primary school. The story goes that his teacher was getting annoyed with um, Frederick uh, shouting out the answers all the time and just gave him this really difficult puzzle which was adding up the numbers from 1 to 100 um, and, and Gauss worked on this and, and came up with a formula um, and the teacher said, well, if you finished on 1 to 100, work up 1 to 1,000. And Gauss, a couple of seconds later, just applied his formula and answered the question. So quite an interesting um, story there. Um, let's have a look at what would happen if we didn't just have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and we had any, G any arithmetic sequence. Remember, arithmetic sequences start at A, and they go up by D each time. So in an arithmetic series, we're going to be adding all of these terms up together in a very, very similar way to how Gauss did it with 1 to 100. The first thing we'll do is reverse the order of that summation. The reason I'm showing you this is because you need to be able to replicate this in an exam. Now let's add together in the columns. So in this case here, the first addition that I'm going to compute is a plus a plus n minus 1 lots of d, which is quite simply just 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d. Now the next term that we're going to add together here is the a plus d plus a plus n minus 2 lots of d. So in this case here, we're going to add together the a's separately, which will give us 2a. And then we'll group together the d's afterwards. So if you've got d and n minus 2 lots of d, well, in total, when you add those together there, you'll get n minus 1 lots of d. And you can see that by expanding the brackets, we're just seeing how it works with addition. And if you do this, in fact, all the way along, what you're always going to get is 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d, 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d, for n number of terms added together. So what you're doing here is you're effectively adding equation 1 to equation 2, like kind of like you do with simultaneous equations. So sn times sn gives you 2sn, equals and then 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d, n times in our, in our addition. So if this here is going to be n lots of 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d, we can write it like that. n lots of 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d. 
And then the last thing for us to do to create a formula for this uh, summation here is to divide through by 2. So in this case here we're going to get n over 2 lots of 2a plus m minus 1 lots of d. So this here now is a formula to work out the summation of any arithmetic sequence. You just need to know your starting value of a, your common difference of d, and how many terms you're going to add up together, n, and you can add up any arithmetic sequence um, that you wish to add up. Another way of doing it, like Gauss did it, was to do n divided by 2 and then a plus capital L and in Gauss's proof capital L would have been 100 L stands for the last term. So you've effectively kind of got two useful formulas here um, to add up an arithmetic sequence. So you may be asked to prove these in an exam. Let's have a go at trying to calculate an arithmetic um, addition of this sequence here. Now if you look at the terms in this sequence of numbers here, this is an arithmetic sequence. So I can use the arithmetic sequence or the arithmetic series formula. In this case here, a starts at 32, the first term. Common difference is minus 5. And we're looking here to add up the first 50 terms. So n here is 50. And now you just apply the formula. 50 is our n value, divide that by 2, open brackets, 2 times 32, our starting value a, plus 50 minus 1, that's n minus 1, lots of minus 5, and that's going to give us minus 4,525. It's going to be a negative number, obviously, because it, seeing as this is going downhill, by the time we've got to the 50 terms, the majority of those 50 terms are going to be negative numbers. We've almost lost all of the positive terms, in, even in just writing down the first 10 here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get a negative addition here. Uh, let's have a go then at solving a little bit more of a complicated problem. Find the smallest number n of the terms required for the sum 4 plus 9 plus 14 plus 19 to exceed 2,000. So we want the summation of this um, sequence here to be greater than 2,000. So we have to use the summation formula. We don't know n though, so that's what we're going to be working out. But we do want the sum of all of these numbers to be greater than 2,000. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to use this summation formula but without being able to plug in what d is, without being able to plug in what n is. We know that d is 5, it's going up by 5 each time. We know what a is because it starts at 4. So let's substitute in the values that we do know. And what we would quite like is for this summation here to be bigger than 2,000. So we, don't, we can't substitute in anything for n, but we can for a and d. So we've gone ahead and done that. Uh, we've gone ahead and multiplied out a few of the brackets. And we've simplified the algebra here. And the algebra is simplified to 0 equals 5n squared plus 3n minus 4,000. So at this point, we could try and factorize, or we could use that equate polynomial solver that's in our calculator. So once we've gone ahead and done that, we actually find out that n here is one of two values. It's either 27.99 or minus 28.59. Given that we want the summation of this sequence to be greater than 2,000, we want it to be the highest n value, whole number n value, that's bigger than this positive term here. So that n value is going to equal 28. So the first um, time that this, seek, that this series adds up to more than 2,000 is once you've added on the 28th term. Since n has to be a positive integer, the first value will cause the sum of the sequence to be greater than 2,000 will be the 28th term. If you were to add together the first 27 terms, you will get something just under 2,000. But once you've added on that 28th term, that will creep you over the gap. Uh, to 2000. Okay then, so your turn to have a go at a couple of questions here now. Pause the video and try these questions out.
Right, okay then, so let's have a go at part A. Part A here is going to give me an A value of 30 and a D value of minus 3. Uh, and an N value of 40 because I'm adding up together 40 terms here. So let's go ahead and substitute into the formula S of 40. Summing up the first 40 terms is equal to 40 over 2 brackets 2 times 30 plus 39, because that's n minus 1, lots of minus 3. And now the best thing for you to do now is just grab your calculator and type this all in. So 20 times, open bracket, 60 plus 39 times minus 3. And this gives us minus 1140. Okay. For part B, I'm going to use a slightly different formula to part B. Um, there is another formula that you can use, which is n over 2 brackets a plus l. Now, l here stands for the last value in this summation here. So this is what I'm going to do. S, n, um, I don't know how many terms are going to be in this sequence, so I'll have to work that out. Uh, 75, I know that A is going to be 5, I know that D is going to be 2, I just don't know what N is. Uh, so let's go ahead and work this out then. So I need UN to equal 5 plus N minus 1 lots of D to equal 75. So where's this formula come from? It's come from the first video in this sequence of videos where this expression here, a plus n minus 1 lots of d, is the nth term expression for this sequence here. Now if I rearrange my equation here and subtract 75, I get 70, divide through by 2 and I get 35, and add on 1 and I get 36. So we're adding up together here 36 terms. So S36 is going to equal 36 over 2 times by A which is 5, L which was 75. So let's go ahead and work this out on the calculator. 36 divided by 2 times by 80 which is 1,440. So a couple of steps for that question, really. The first step was to work out which term in the sequence we were adding up to, or how many numbers we were adding up here. In this case, it was 36 numbers we were adding up. We worked this out by applying the formula un equals a plus m minus 1 lots of d, and by the fact that we knew that un, we don't know what the n value was, but that was what we were working out, was equal to 75, the highest term in our sequence. The second part of this uh, question here was to just apply the n over 2 plus, sorry, n over 2 times a plus l. For question 6 here, the sum of the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence is 12. If the 20th term is minus 32, find the first term and the common difference. So simultaneous equations here again. Now for the first three terms, I can probably do this by hand. A plus A plus D plus A plus 2D uh, is going to equal 3A plus 3D. In this case, this equals 12. So we know that A plus D must equal 4 first of our simultaneous equations. We also know the 20th term of our sequence, so u20, which is going to be a plus n minus 1 lots of d equals minus 32. But we know that u is 20, we know that n is 20, so let's go ahead and use that a plus 19d equals minus 32, second of our simultaneous equations. So ahead, let's go ahead now and do equation 2 minus equation 1. And in doing so, we're going to get a minus a is 0. 19d minus d is 18d. 
and now doing a bit of negative subtraction in minus 32 minus 4 will give us minus 36 so d here is minus 2 we can kind of tell this from the sequence because it's uh, actually we'd never know because the sum of the first three is a positive number but the uh, 20th term is a negative number so we can kind of tell here that our sequence is going downhill uh, but we can also tell back from equation 1 that the starting term here, if d is minus 2, add the 2 onto the other side, you get a is 6. So we've solved this question. Now the common difference here is minus 2, and the first term is 6. So we can still use simultaneous equations even when we're in an arithmetic series type question. Okay, what we're going to look at next is a new type of sequence, which is called a geometric type sequence, where we times to get the next value in the sequence. Just remember then that arithmetic series um, apply these types of formulas here. Um, so when you see the word arithmetic, think of these types of sequences. Okay, but have a lots of goes at have a go at lots of questions from exercise three B. Um, make sure you're good at arithmetic series before moving on to the next type of sequence or, and series. Okay, thanks very much for watching.